Okay, so now about question number five. We have f of x is equal to x raised to the power 100 over 100 plus x raised to the power 9 and by 99 plus all the way up to x squared by 2 plus x plus 1. And you want to prove that f prime of 1 is equal to 100 times f prime of 0. And I think f prime of 0 becomes 1 and this is and f prime of 1 is equal to now we, we will see how that goes. So, so now what we can do is that we can actually calculate the, the derivative of this function and then evaluate that at, at x is equal to 1, at x is equal to 0, and then we can verify this. Meaning that uh, we can, basically we can write d by dx of f of x or f prime of x is equal to uh, basically is equal to well you have for example you have x raised to the power 100 divided by 100 the derivative of uh, the derivative of uh, basically so one thing that we can do here or we can teach ourselves is that d by dx of basic d x raised to the power 100 divided by 100 is the same thing as is the same thing as d by dx of basic d 1 over 100 times x raised to the power 100 and of course this is a constant right and we know that the now if i if I want to take the, the, deriva the derivative of this based on the first principle, I would write this as the limit of, I would write this as the limit of basically um, the limit of uh, f of x, f of x plus h minus, minus f of x divided by h as h tends to zero. And then that would be equal to the limit of basically f of x plus h would be 1 divided by 100 times uh, times x plus h raised to the power 100 and then minus f of x so minus 1 divided by 100 minus 1, 1, 1 divided by 100 times times x raised to the power 100. And that divided by that divided by h as h tends to zero, right? Um, now you can see that you can see that I can write this as the limit of basically one divided by hundred times x plus h raised to the power hundred minus x raised to the power hundred minus x raised to the power 100 divided by divided by h as h tends to 0 and of course in the limit I can take this 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 constant out meaning that I can write this as 1 divided 1 1 divided by 100 times the limit of x tends x tends to 0 of basically x plus h raised to the power 100 minus x raised to the power 100 divided by h. Now whatever this becomes, whatever this limit becomes doesn't matter. But uh, essentially in the in the process you can take any any basically any um, you can take any constant that you have, you can take it out and then calculate the rest of the the derivative. Which means that, um, which means that basically, now let's, 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 um, Uh, 
Let's actually prove this thing with algebra. Let's actually prove this thing using algebra. So for example, let's say that let's go for x raised to the power n, right? Let's go for x raised to the power or let's go for x raised to the power 2, for example. Now, if you have a function like, for example, f of x is equal to x raised to the power 2, then f prime of x would be equal to the limit of basically the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h as h tends to 0. And so that, that would be equal to, and, and, I'm, and I want to make my, make my function, for example, 3 times x squared. 3 times x squared, right? So from, from basically from our knowledge of the derivatives, we know that this is equal to 2 times, 2 times 3 is equal to, we know that here f prime of x is equal to 2 times 3 is equal to 6x raised to the power 1. We, we already know this, right? So now if, if I, now I want to prove this using algebra as well, um, to make sure that I can actually take this out, take this 1 by 100 out and then, and then, and then take the derivative of the rest of the, of the rest of the function, right? So about this function 3x squared, I can write basically, um, I can write basically the limit of f of x plus h so f of x plus h is equal to is equal to basically 3 times 3 times x plus h whole squared minus f of x which is 3 times x squared divided by h as h tends to 0 right now of course in the limit I can take this 3 out I can take this 3 out and write this as the limit of 3 times basically x plus h whole squared minus x squared divided by h as h tends to 0, right? And then this is the same thing as basically the, the 3 times limit of 3 times limit of h tends to 0 of basically x plus h whole squared minus x squared divided by h and that would be the derivative of that would be the derivative of d by dx of basically 3 times x squared that is the derivative of 3 times x squared right so you can take that out right and now, if of course, if you calculate the derivative of, for example, x squared alone, the derivative of x squared alone, you would have basically, if if your f of x is equal to x squared, then of course f prime of x would be equal to, would be equal to, um, um, would be equal to. Th um, the limit of basically f of x f of x plus h which is equal to x plus h whole squared minus f of x which is equal to x squared divided by h as h tends to zero. Okay. So you can see that this is the limit of x plus h whole squared minus minus x squared divided by h as h tends to zero. And that is that is the that is the the basically the d by dx of x squared. That means that you can say that d by dx of 3 times x squared is actually the same thing as is actually the same thing as 3 times the limit of x squared. Oh, I'm sorry, it's, it's actually 3 times d by dx of x squared. Because if you take the d by dx of x squared multiplied by 3 you will get essentially this limit here this this derivative here which means that in the 
you can just simply when you have d by dx of 3 times x squared so you can of course take that out and write this as d by dx of x squared and calculate your derivative and by the same logic you can say that basically d by dx of for example one thirds for example x squared is also equal to one thirds times d by dx of x squared or any other any other any other constant for that matter meaning that you can write d by dx of a x squared is equal to a times d by dx of x squared a being any constant right any real constant basically so which means that basically you can which means that you can uh, basically um, which means that you can write x basically the derivative of x raised to the power 100 times times basically divided by divided by 100 you can write it as 100 d by dx of x raised to x raised to the power 100 right that you can do so what you need to do is therefore forget about all of these things and now uh, on this in this step what you can do is that because this was a question that I always had and I wanted to verify that so now over here basically the rest of this I can write I can write basically just simply write 100 times d by dx of basically x raised to the power 100 and we already know what this is so x raised to the power 100 is equal to d by dx of x raised to the power 100 is equal to um, is equal to basically 100 times 100 times x raised to the power 99 and then this 100 and this 100 is cancelled out you get x raised to the power 99 so this is the first this is the first term of this of this polynomial this becomes the the, the derivative of the first term becomes x raised to the power 99 and then by the same logic this becomes x raised to the power 98 x raised to the power 98 97 96 and so on and so forth and this becomes zero right and therefore you will get and therefore you will get uh, 101 and so this is uh, 199 all the way up to 1 so this is 100 terms and that would be 101 terms so that means that then you can write so as long as you know that the derivative of this first term is x raised to the power 99 I'm going to erase all of this and then I'm going to write the the f prime of x here as x raised to the power 99 plus x raised to the power 98 plus all the way up to uh, basically the, the derivative of this term which is equal to 1 and the derivative of this term is equal to 0 I'm not going to write that and this is basically 100 terms and you know why this is 100 terms because this was originally 101 terms including the 1 but then the derivative of 1 became 0 so that we didn't write it and therefore we get 100 terms here right okay so this is f prime of x and now in order to verify this uh, in order to prove this i can calculate f1 f prime of 1 so f prime of 1 is equal to 1 raised to the power 99 plus 1 raised to the power 98 plus all the way up to 1 1 plus 1 plus all the way up to 1 100 terms which is of course 100 right is equal to is equal to 100 and f prime of 0 is equal to basically 0 raised to the power anything is equal to 0 so you get 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus all the way up to 
plus all the way up to basically all the way up to uh, zero plus a one and this is 99 terms which is of course doesn't matter how many terms you have but then you have a one over here at the end which means that you will get a one now um, f prime of one f prime of one is equal to is equal to 100 and f prime of zero is equal to one so 100 times one is equal to 100 and therefore f prime of one is equal to 100 times f prime of zero that's how you verify this thing okay so question number six we have question number six we have find the derivative of x raised to the power n uh, plus a times x raised to the power n minus one and so on and so forth for some fixed real number a okay number six we want to find the derivative of the derivative of of this of x raised to the power n plus a times x raised to the power n minus 1 plus a squared times x raised to the power n minus 2 plus all the way up to uh, a raised to the power n minus 1 a raised to the power n minus 1 so over here you have a raised to the power n and you go all the way up to a raised to the power n so over here you will get x raised to the power that the power of x x is basically um, here if i take here you have a raised to the power zero right here i have a raised to the power zero a raised to the power 1, 2, 3, and so on, all the way up to a raised to the power n. a raised to the power n, and here you have n, n minus 1, n minus 2. And um, there you go, a raised to the power n minus 1. Um, so here the power of, uh, the power of a is increasing. n minus 1 and and n and n here the power of x is 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 decreasing meaning that n, n minus 1 n minus 2 all the way up to x raised to the power x raised to the power um, So here you have n minus 1, n minus 2, so that becomes n minus, uh, n minus basically n minus 1, which becomes n minus n plus 1, which is, which is basically 1, so this becomes x. And then uh, over here you would get x raised to the power n minus n, which is equal to x raised to the power 0. So this becomes x raised to the power zero, right? So now in, in case you didn't understand this step, you see over here, um, I have, I have basically a raised to the x, uh, basically, let me write this again. So you have basically, this is, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's always useful to be able to write these, these, uh, basically, whatever you call it. I, I don't know what to call this sort of thing. But you have x raised to the power n plus a x raised to the power n minus 1 plus a, ta a squared times x raised to the power n minus 2. And now you want to know how to how to essentially end this thing okay and you need to take a look at this you need to take a look at the whole structure of the whole uh, basically 
of all the terms and see how they are related together. So you see that over here you have a raised to the power 1, a raised to the power 2. That means that over here you have a raised to the power 0. And that means that basically the, the power of a is increasing here, meaning that you have 0, 1, 2. And so basically the, the last term would be a raised to the power n. So the last term would be a raised to the power n, right? Now, over here I have x as well. So the power of x is decreasing because you have x raised to the power n, n minus 1, n minus 2. And the power of, the power of x is always n minus this number. You see, x, x raised to the power n minus, for example, 1, n minus 0 and n minus 2 for example so then n minus this number would be n minus n which is equal to 0 and that would be x raised to the power 0 usually you you need to write a term before that and then again over here you need you need a you need a and x as well and we said that the powers of a are increasing when you when you're moving in this direction increasing powers of a meaning that when you move in the other direction the power of a is supposed to be decreasing meaning that you get n minus 1 here and and then the power of x is always n minus this 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 power so n minus n minus 1 would be n minus n plus 1 and these two would cancel out you'll get raised to the power 1 and then the rest of the terms would be basically based on the same rule right so this is this term this is this um, um, you can call it a polynomial for example or a function and then you have a raised to the power 0 is equal to 1 so you have x raised to the power so you have x raised to the power n a raised to the power 1 is equal to a so that's a times x raised to the power n minus 1 plus a squared x raised to the power n minus 2 plus all the way up to a raised to the power n minus 1 times x plus a raised to the power n times 1 which is which is basically which is basically that so now uh, you want to find the derivative of this of this function for example for some fixed real number a for some fixed real number a okay okay so now uh, basically uh, if you want to let's say that for example let's call this f of x let's call this f of x and then f prime of x would be equal to basically uh, would be equal to d by dx of x raised to the power n d by dx of x raised to the power n plus d by dx of for example a x raised to the power n minus 1 plus d by dx of for example a squared x raised to the power n minus 2 plus all the way up to d by dx of a raised to the power n minus 1 times x plus d by dx of uh, a raised to the power n, right? Now, as we discussed before, since uh, basically a is a fixed real number, you can take it out from each of these terms, meaning that you can write, uh, um, meaning that you can write basically um, you can write d by dx of x raised to the power n plus a times d by dx of x raised to the power n minus 1 plus a squared times d by dx of x raised to the power n minus 2 plus all the way up to a raised to the power n minus 1 times d by dx of x 
plus uh, basically a raised to the power n times d by dx of 1. And then if you use, if you use basically using uh, d by dx of x raised to the power n is equal to n times x raised to the power n minus 1, we have, we have basically this becomes equal to, this would be equal to, uh, this would be equal to um, of course n times x raised to the power n minus 1 plus uh, plus basically plus uh, n minus 1 times plus a times n minus 1 times x raised to the power n minus 2 plus basically a squared times n minus 2 times x raised to the power n minus 3 plus all the way up to um, basically a raised to the power a raised to the power n minus 1 which is and then d by dx sub x is equal to 1 and then plus a raised to the power n right so that, that's n times x raised to the power n minus 1 plus a times n minus 1 times x raised to the power n minus 2 plus a squared n times a minus, a n minus 2 times x raised to the power n minus 3 plus all the way up to a raised to the power n minus 1. And of course, and of course, the d by dx of the basic d, um, what is this thing? d by dx of x. Um. Oh, okay, so d by dx of n a raised to power n is equal to 0, actually. This you don't have to write it anymore, and then you don't have to write this anymore, and so this would be the derivative of your function, right? Because a raised to the power n is a, is a, is a constant, so the derivative of the constant is zero. I apologize for the mistake. That was basically question number six. Now, question number seven, we have, um, we have, uh, basically the following. Okay, so question number seven, we have uh, basically for some constants a and b for some constants a and b find the derivative of find the derivative of the derivative of for example, x minus a times x minus b. Let's call it, for example, f of x. So, what you can do with this is that, I mean, the simplest way, there are different ways of doing this, of course, but, uh, what you can do with this is that you can, um, I don't know, simply multiply, right? You can simply multiply and write this as um, for example, you can write this as f of x is equal to f of x is equal to, for example, x squared uh, minus bx minus ax and uh, plus ab, right? And then you can take an x out here, so you can write it as x squared negative x times a plus b plus ab. So, uh, 
so that that's the same thing as so I can write this as negative a so I can write this as x squared negative a plus b times x plus a b right and so that is f of x now I have I did this because I wanted to basically a and b so I since they are constants I wanted to 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 get them together so I could take them out now f prime of x would be equal to d by dx of basically x squared minus a plus b times x plus a b plus a b and that is the same thing as d by dx of x squared minus d by dx of basically a plus b times times x plus d by dx of a b right and and then you can write this as so over here you have no a no a no no b so you can write this as d by dx of for example x squared as it is since a plus b is a is a constant you can write it as minus a plus b times d by dx of x d by dx of x and well, d by dx of a plus b is just, uh, you can write it as plus a b, I'm sorry, a b not a plus b, a b times d by dx of 1, right? And then you would, you could write this as basically 2x and negative a plus b, negative of a plus b times 1 plus Basically, the derivative of 1 would be 0, so this whole term would be 0. And therefore, you have 2x minus a minus b, for example. 2x minus a minus b. That's how you would, how you would find the, 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 the derivative here. Or part, part 2 of the same question, meaning that a, b, b, treating them as constants, you could write basically, let's say that your f of x is equal to ax squared minus or plus b whole squared, right? Now, to find the derivative of this, I can write this as... Uh, Well, I can write this as f of x is equal to, for example, this is a plus b whole squared, so ax squared whole squared plus b squared plus 2 times ax squared times b, which is the same thing as a squared x raised to the power 4 plus, plus, plus b squared plus 2 times abx squared. Right. And so then this is your f of x. Now f prime of x would be equal to basically d by dx of a squared x raised to the power 4 plus d by dx of b squared d by dx of b squared plus d by dx of 2 times a b times x squared and so since a and b are constants, I can write this as basically a squared d by dx of x raised to the power 4 plus, well, b squared times d by dx of 1 plus, plus basically 2 times a b times d by dx of x squared. And so this would be 4 times x cube. So this would be 4 times x cube. So 4 times x cube times a squared would be 4a squared would be 4a squared x cube would be 4 times a squared x cube 
and this would be basically zero because d by dx of one is equal to zero so that's zero plus this would be two times x times 2x times times basically 2ab which is equal to 4 times ab x 4 times ab x that is the answer there so before part b is um, that was part that was part 2 And then you can write this as 4a times 4a times x, 4 times a times x, times uh, basically a x squared plus uh, b, a x squared times plus b, 4a x times a x squared plus b. That is part part. That was part two of this question. Now part three of this question is part three of this question is let's say that your f of x is equal to basically x minus a over x plus a x plus a okay so about this function okay it seems that I have made a mistake here which is Part three of this question is actually something else. It's actually not what I have written. So part three of this question is x minus a over over x minus b over x minus b over x minus b. Okay. So now you know the quotient rule u divided by v whole prime is equal to basically u prime times v minus u v prime divided by v squared. Which means that f prime of x is equal to basically is equal to u prime which is d by dx of d by dx of x minus a times the denominator which is x minus b minus the numerator which is x minus a times d by dx of the denominator which is x minus b and you divide that by v squared which is x minus b whole squared right now uh, you can basically you can write that as you can write that as uh, x minus b okay so so you can write that as basically for example d by dx of x is equal to one and d by d by dx of a is equal to zero so that so this whole thing becomes one one times x minus b minus x minus a times d by dx of x is equal to 1 and this is 0 so that so this whole thing becomes 1 over x minus b whole squared which is the same thing as basically x minus b uh, minus x minus a divided by x minus b whole squared x minus b whole squared which is the same thing as well x minus b minus x plus a and then these two you will cancel out you have x minus b whole squared so you have a minus b over x minus b whole squared a minus b over x minus b whole squared that is part three of this question question number eight we have Question number eight, we have uh, find the derivative of x raised to the power n min minus, that is number eight. We want to find the derivative, let's call it f of x is equal to x raised to the power n minus a raised to the power n over x minus a. 
as for some constant a for some constant a I think we had this somewhere okay so where we actually talked about this before was that when we were talking about limits we said that basically the limit of x raised to the power n minus a raised to the power n over x minus a as x tends to a is equal to n times a raised to the power um, n minus 1 that was all about limits now here we want to basically find the the derivative of this function right now there is a there is of course a difference there is a of course not a difference but but they are completely different there is a difference between the limit and the derivative the derivative of course uses the uses limit in order for uh, you to be able to to, to find that the, the the derivative of a function meaning that for example when you have a function f of x is equal to x squared when you want to know the rate of change at this point for example on your function you need to take the derivative of the function and the derivative of the and to find the derivative you have to use the limit in the definition of the derivative but um, but the limit itself it does it has nothing to do with the rate of change the limit itself shows you basically to what values the value the, the, the value of the function are tending when you get closer and closer to some point meaning that for example when you have suppose that you have this function over here suppose that you have for example this function over here f of x is equal to x squared right you have this function over here now suppose that you have at x is equal to 2 you have some outputs related to this function let's call this 4 this is f of x is equal to x squared now if i take the limit of this function if I take the limit of f of x as x tends to 2, I would get a 4, right? I would get a 4 because, um, because uh, basically, uh, um, if I take the limit of this function as x tends to 2, as, as you can see, as I'm, as I'm getting closer and closer to 2, the values of the function are tending to, are tending to 4. As I'm getting closer to 2 from the right, the values of the function are getting closer and closer to 4. And therefore, the value of the function at, at, at the, the limit of the function at, as x tends to 2 is equal to 4, right? Mm, and it just so happens that also if you take the derivative of this function as the derivative of this function the f prime of x that is also equal to that is actually equal to 2x meaning that f prime of 2 is also equal to 2 times 2 which is equal to 4 of course this this you can call just a coincidence coincidence because because um, because for example you could have you could have a function that uh, you could have a different function but now to, to, to let me not get lost uh, and 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 and, fin and and bring the point home so when you write the f of f prime of x is equal to 2x that's that's just a line with that is just a line with this kind of slope. So let's say that this is 2, and so this would be 1. And so if this is 4, let's say that this is 2, and this is 3, and this is, for example, 1. And basically, f of x is equal to 2x would be some point over here. So that would be basically this line. This is the derivative of this function. And uh, moreover, uh, the derivative of this function at this particular point would be a line, some line like this. 
would be the 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 the, the, the basically the the slope of the slide, right? So the derivative of this function at x is equal to two, or f prime of two, is the slope of this 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 green line, whatever that might be. In this case, it happens to be four, right? But the limit of the function at, at, at as x tends to 2 for the same function, it has nothing to do with the slope of this line. It is basically as you get as you get closer and closer to 2, you can see that the values of the function are getting closer and closer to 4. And as you get closer and closer to 2 from the left, you can see that the values of the function are getting closer and closer to 4 just the values, the, the output of the function, right? This is one example. Another example would be, for example, let's say that you have a function like f of x is equal to 3x. So 1, 2, and 3, and you would have this point over here, and you would have a function like this. This is, this is f of x, this is f of x is equal to 3x. I, 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 I'm, I'm giving you this example just to make sure that you are not confused with the previous example where the, the limit and the derivative of the function at the same point, they had the same values. That was, sometimes that happens, of course. I was not planning that really because otherwise I wouldn't have given you the example. Now you can see that basically f of x is equal to 3x. I can write the limit of f of x as x tends to 1, for example. You can see that as x tends to 1, and as I'm getting closer and closer to 1 from the right, so the values of the function are getting closer and closer to 3. And as I'm getting closer and closer to 1 from the left, the values of the function are getting closer and closer to 3. And therefore, the, um, and therefore the, the limit of, the, the limit of the, of the, of f of x at, as, as x tends to 1 is actually equal to is actually equal to 3, right? Is actually equal to 3. Now the derivative of this function at every point, the derivative of this function, now let me actually change this point because, uh, let me actually change, change this point because I want to show you something else and again I'm getting into the same problem. So let me actually draw the function again. So let's say that you have f of x is equal to, let's say that you have f of x is equal to 3x. So 1, 2, and 3, and the same point. And so you have this line over here. This is f of x is equal to 3x. Now you can see that the, the output of the function at at x is equal to 2 is equal to 6. This is x is equal to 2. This is the output is equal to 6. And so as you can see, as I'm getting closer and closer to 2, the values of the function are getting closer and closer to 6. As I'm getting closer and closer to 2 from the left, the values of the function are getting closer and closer to 6, which means that the which means that basically the the limit of which which is to say that basically which is to say that the limit of f of x as x tends to two is equal to six. That is the meaning of the that means the meaning of the limit, meaning that meaning that if the function was supposed to be defined at x is equal to two, now this in this case for example the function is actually defined as x as as x as at x is equal to 2. But even if it was not, what it means is that even if the function was not defined at x is equal to 2, if it were to be defined at x is equal to 2, what values would I be expecting from this function at x is equal to 2? And 
it gives you six, right? It could be any other thing, and then your 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 limit could be equal to six, depending on the case. Of course, it's different. But then, if I based on the same function, if I calculate f prime of x, that is equal to three, which is basically the which is basically the which is basically the the slope of this line, right? And based on the same base base based on this, you can say that basically f prime of, for example, f prime of two is actually equal to three, meaning that you can see that at at x is equal to two, the the limit of the function is is equal to six, but the but the but the but the but the but the, but the derivative of the function at x is equal to two is actually equal to three. Of course, for some functions. Like for example, the one that we had here, they happen to be the same. That was, which is something that happens sometimes, of course. But it's not like, I mean, it's um, it is just that the concept of derivative and the concept of limit are completely different things. Meaning that the limit, the limit is actually nothing but basically the values the values of the function at 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 this point meaning that you just want to know what values you're getting you're getting for the function as you're getting closer and closer to this point from the right and left from the right and left on the depending on the on the on the output of the function then you would be getting some values from the right you would be getting some values from the left, meaning that the, from the right and from the left, those values are tending and getting closer and closer to some common value. And if that common value exists, then that, then that you will call the limit of the function at that point, right? But when you say the derivative of a function at some point, that is the, that is the, the slope of the function at that point. It has nothing to do with the, with the, with the, with the, the value of the output of the function. The value of the output of the function could be anything with any slope, right? So that's basically the, the, the actually the difference between, and, and it, this is a point that has to be clearly understood, right? Now what, what 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 that means is that now I, I i had to talk about this because because uh, we came across this question and then and then basically uh, we said that in the limits we talked about that that concept and then now we want to take the derivative of this function and so on and so forth i just wanted to make sure that uh, we understand the difference between the concept of derivative and the concept of limit because we actually never talked about it and these are uh, the kinds of things that that uh, you need to uh, understand and of course when you get into uh, higher mathematics um, you will see that of course the concept of limit is a is a very useful concept and you can take the limit of anything meaning that when you want to when you want to see for example what's happening to some value as it's changing and changing and and getting closer to some number and closer and closer you can use the same concept of limit and take the limit of anything that you want as long as it's mathematically allowed to see, for example, what is the limit of this value and that value and so on and so forth. And it, of course, it has nothing to do with, I mean, necessarily it has, it has, it has nothing to do with derivative. Derivative is just one concept in, in mathematics that uses the concept of limit. Otherwise, uh, the concept of limit is this concept that can be used for anything at all. As long as that concept can be applied to limits, of course. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to end this video here. And we will discuss this question in the next video. Thank you.